Hello, this is Rory with the Love Chat, and today's topic is my thoughts on, like, everything. Now, this is video number 192. If you have a question you'd like for me to consider featuring on the Love Chat, please write it in a comment below. And if you enjoy my videos, I'd be so very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Also, if you'd like to do a Skype or email coaching, just visit my website, thelovechat.net slash coaching. Now then, I've never really got a chance to do a just stream of consciousness episode, right? It's, it's always edited, and I'm always sitting and thinking about what I'm going to say before I say it. And I decided that for this episode, I want to try something different. Um, I took a short break uh, of a couple of days just to kind of get away and have a little mini vacation to myself. And now that I'm back, I suppose it's a, a sort of inspiration. So this episode's not going to be very edited. Um, I'm going to clean it up a little bit, but I'm not really going to remove anything that I said. And I just want to talk about how dating's going and relationships and breakups. So I guess I'll start with breakups because that's what we talk about the most. Um, you know, when somebody breaks up with you, just at its very core, the only thing you can think of is rejection, right? Of what you no longer have. And I think that that is sort of the problem and the solution in its own weird way. Because when you're broken up with and somebody told you, well, you know, effectively, I don't want to be with you. Maybe they said it in different terms, like, oh, well, you're such a great person, and you'll you'll find somebody, don't worry about it, you know, it's just a matter of time for you, if only I could find somebody great like you, or whatever crap might have come falling out of their mouth. A couple things go through your mind, and, and the first of which is, okay, so you're rejecting me, right? It's It's not what you just said, it's what you just said, plus, I don't want to be with you. Now, our first inclination is to turn upon ourselves and just viciously dive into ourselves. You know, you're an awful human. Why would they ever want to be with you again? They're going to meet somebody new and just get married within a month, and, and that's it. You lost your chance forever. The second inclination is to dive into them. Like, you're a evil bitch. You never gave me a chance. You never told me that you felt this way, even if they have a thousand times, perhaps just not in the way you wanted to be told. Frankly put, there's no good way to have a breakup. There are gentle breakups. There are breakups that have peaceful endings, but I don't know that there's inherently good breakups, um, even when they're mutual. And I suppose the reason that I wanted to do this sort of format today, as opposed to, you know, a, a typical Love Chat episode, which you will all have. Uh, tomorrow we're doing the live stream, but Thursday you will all have just a regular episode, and that one will be about dating. But it's important to me, to be able to sometimes just sit down with a cup of coffee and talk to you guys um, like I would talk to anybody else, you know, that I, on the street without it being so formatted. So breakups are one of the most painful things you'll ever go through. <clears throat> and I think we, in that state of fear and anxiety, aren't thinking rationally, which is why some of the biggest advice that I have that you guys hear over and over again is no contact. What's the whole point, right? What's the point of no contact? To get away from your ex and to help you be less anxious and less fearful and less needy. Because if you're extremely needy and your ex comes back, they're not going to want you back. Now, this is all, this should be understood for any video I ever make. This is all under the context of they broke up with you. And so you want to really deeply consider if the problem and the reason that they broke up with you has been fixed, and if you want somebody back who walked away from you. Now, take blame, because whatever the reason for the breakup is, I'm sure at least part of it is your fault. So take blame. There it is, right? We need to take blame so that there's somewhere to build from, somewhere to grow from. Otherwise, we're just victims, and bad stuff happens to us, and life is hard, and, and woe is us. That's not helpful. It's not healthy. There is no right way to get through a breakup, but there are tons of wrong ways. So you spend some time in no contact, and secretly, <clears throat> of course, you're hoping that no contact works, right? You're, and by works, what are we really saying? We're saying, I hope that them not talking to me makes them miss me to the point where they want to reach out and come back. And frankly put, yeah, that's a real possibility with no contact. And it doesn't matter how many times I tell you guys that's not why you should be doing it. You should be doing it to improve yourselves. Because what if your ex comes back? 
what if no contact works? And they come back. I missed you. Let's try again. And then they find out that your anxiety really hasn't been solved. The self-love is not there. The social status, at least the social life, is not there. You're still at home every day waiting for them to call. They're still your entire world. And they leave again. The likelihood that they're going to give you a second or third chance is not good. I should have said third. The likelihood that they give you a third chance, them coming back would have been the second chance. Um, it, it's, it's, it exists, but it's nowhere near as good. I'll put it that way. So everybody, you really want to consider if you're not doing the work and if you're just listening to these videos, your chance of getting them back is not good. They might come back. The chance of them remaining is less because you're not working to your capacity. And perhaps that's one of the reasons the breakup happened. When we talk about, oh, well, you were too clingy, you were too needy, you were too available, etc. Isn't that really just saying you spent too much time on them and not enough time on you? A.K.A. you weren't working yourself to your personal capacity? Imagine where everybody would be if you worked, you know, to 75% of your potential. But we live in a world where 49% is a, is a, is a B plus, And that's fine. It, it just boggles the mind. Because imagine who you could be. And if we're being honest, you know what's wrong with you. If you're being honest with yourself, you, you know that there's a couple things that you really could clean up about yourself. And you, being more honest, know that you're probably not doing it to your capacity. And if you are, you haven't given it enough time. Because breakups are horrible, and they're painful, but they're solvable, right? You can get over them. Sometimes it's rough. Yeah, sometimes it's your wife or your husband or, or somebody you've been with for a very long time. And life sucks sometimes. But that doesn't mean it has to suck forever. And that's the part I don't get. Sometimes I talk to people, I spoke to somebody before I went on this little mini break, and they hadn't heard from their partner in like three years. And it's not that they wanted their ex back, it's that they wondered why they still felt this way after three years. And I would ask the typical questions, you know, have you been going to therapy? Have you been doing this, doing that, going to the gym, journaling, expressing your emotions in a healthy way, et cetera, et cetera. And they said, yeah. So at that point, I had two options, either A, to assume that they were a liar, or B, to assume that something deeper was going on. And so we talked about it, and what we figured out was, you know, their sense of identity was just robbed. Because they were with this person for so long that they had no idea who they were when that person left. And so it was about rebuilding an identity. So, of course, there's little things that you can pick on, right? Like, okay, well, now I go to the gym, so that's part of my identity. And, okay, now I go to the counselor, and I do this, and I do that, and I enjoy nature, and blah, 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 blah. So these things are now part of my identity, but it's the greater person. You can say, I am, and then you have things to say after I am. So... And this is something I deeply struggle with. Um, and not so much anymore, but I, I have struggled with in the past. And the truth of all that is that it's okay. You're not supposed to have all the answers right now. You're not supposed to know exactly what to be doing to feel okay. But you're supposed to turn to the things that you know will definitely make you feel at least 1% better. Because that's 1% more of yourself that you've reclaimed. And hey, if we can do that 100 times, then you know you're better. At least better than you were. And we're given this opportunity to suffer and then create something beautiful because of our suffering. And it's sort of just backwards when you allow the unhappiness to just swallow you whole, right? Because all you can think of is how you lost something. And yet dwelling on what you do not have is a surefire way to make it a hell of a lot worse. But people can't help it. You know, it's painful. But pain is a fantastic motivator, a fantastic teacher. And so what do you do? You steel yourself against the pain and you find ways to make sure a pain like that never happens again. And you find through the process of rebuilding who you are and reconstructing your body very literally at the gym and your mind very literally with a counselor. And you find that not only is it ideal to be doing these things, but these are things that should have been done all along. We always hear about the importance of, you know, physical fitness and mental health, and yet we don't really take it seriously until we need to. And this is a situation like that. There are no good, solid, 
ways that work for everybody to get over a breakup. But there are ways to improve your body, and there are ways to improve your mind. And these help facilitate the healing within yourself. And that's why I always suggest them and turn to them. And if people would just stop typing YouTube comments and just go try these things every day for one month, as, as reasonable, you know, with counseling it's a little different, but you guys get what I'm trying to say. You'd be surprised how much better you'd feel. And I talk to a lot of people, uh, private coaching, and I always ask the questions, are you doing the work? And they'll say, yeah, 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 you know. And then I'll do some digging, and they'll tell me the truth because I'm there to help them, and lying to me is pointless. And I'll discover that they weren't really doing the work. And for those of you that are doing the work, I always see positive comments in the YouTube section, YouTube channel section. See, this is what happens when I go stream of consciousness. And they'll say, you know, hey, this really worked. And um, I, I look, there's so many voices on YouTube telling you so many different things. And it this seems like one of those things that should be complicated. And you have to understand that the other coaches, the more manipulative ones, uh, are banking on that. They're banking on you being emotional. They're banking on you needing to have a plan mapped out with 12 steps um, that's like breaking into a bank just to win your ex back. And in reality, it's that your ex isn't with you right now because they don't want to be, right? It's simple as that. Maybe they're not attracted enough to you. Maybe they're uh, in a rebound and somebody else caught their attention. Maybe you were abusive. Maybe they were abusive. We don't know. There's so many different variables that can be happening here. But the reason at its very core that they don't want to be with you is because they don't want to be with you. Simple as that. It's both the problem and the solution. They don't want to be with you. So how do you change that? Well, you make yourself a more attractive candidate because then more people will want to be with you. It's simple numbers, right? If you are more mentally at peace and you are looking pretty good and you got a bunch of muscles on you and, and or perhaps whatever you and that person deem to be attractive, because beauty is ultimately in the eye of the beholder, then you increase the likelihood that they want to be with you. It's as simple as that. And then you toss in the fact that you guys have months to years of emotional buildup with each other and memories and things like that, because there are really no such things as brownie points in dating, but maybe there is just a, a speck of that, right? You're, you're a known element to them. They don't have to start over with you, so to speak. And you increase the likelihood that they want to date you. But my guess is that when the breakup happened, you weren't being your best self. You probably were not focusing on you. And while there are many variables, and again, that's a blanket statement, so it's not meant to speak to all of your situations, but most, the reality is that they left you because you were not being very likable. You were not doing the things that should maintain a healthy relationship and healthy attraction. So the question is always, how do I get my ex back? And the question is never the right one, which is, how do I keep them? How do you get your ex back? Go no contact. Leave them alone. And that greatly increases the chance that they miss you. How do you keep them? Have a good structure set in your life. Have things to do. Have a friend group. Say no to them sometimes. Have other things to do, and you will be surprised how much better it gets. Right? We want a partner that we can't quite have. And that goes for dating, too, because I said I would speak about dating here. So dating is is a whole other animal, and yet it's not. So it, it's a whole other animal because it's somebody that you have not been with yet. And so I think one of the most common questions I get these days is, you know, how do I get a partner, right? How do I get a girlfriend or a boyfriend? And it's simple as this. You do everything I told you, right? Like the exercise, like the mental health, like hanging out with friends, like having options. And then you approach somebody you like and you say, hey, you know, you're, you're, you're really cool or you seem really interesting. I'd like to get to know you some more. Can I take you out on a date? And you'd be surprised how many people would be receptive to that. Not because I'm just talking you guys up or gassing you up or whatever it is, but because the lack of confidence that's present in the millennial generation, which I am a millennial, um, is, is overwhelming, right? And confidence is in short supply. And what most people don't understand is that confidence isn't necessarily knowing the path. It's not being afraid of the path. Rejection is 
ever present. We're still afraid of it. I don't know why. It, it never killed anybody. In fact, it usually makes people stronger. It's medicine, right? But the medicine tastes bad. So, you know, if if we just said, hey, I'm working on myself, I'm loving myself, I'm doing everything I can to make me better, and I'd like to share that with somebody. And you find somebody you like at a bookstore, and you said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm sorry this is bold, but I, I'm in a bold mood. I'd love to take you out to dinner. And perhaps there's different tactics for different situations. Obviously, we're not going to break all that down, um, especially with the rise of social media. Some people would rather exchange, you know, Instagram or Facebook numbers or messages or whatever the hell uh, to kind of vet, vet the person first because a lot of people out there are crazy. But then what do we do? We turn to Tinder and Bumble and, and all these different dating apps um, because we don't have to face rejection, right? You never know that the other person didn't like you. And... That way you don't need to feel bad about yourself. And yet inherently you still do because there's so many people you swipe on and there's only so many that swipe back. And, and sometimes it's, you know, only a handful, right? Two or three. Um, so I think, and I suppose I'm speaking to the men at, at this next part. Guys, women don't want a man who is a child. They don't want a child. They want a man who's a man. So get your shit together. That's the nicest way I can put it. Like that is the that is the the PG version of what I had to say. Get your shit together. If you want to be more attractive, you know what to do. It is it's within your it's it's all within your control. It's all within your power. Ladies, men are very easy. We're all stupid. Right? We, we, I promise. Guys, I'm sorry. Men are stupid ladies. And we like you most of the time. Right? But we are afraid of getting shot down. So if you like us back, make it obvious because guys are stupid. That's all I got. And, you know, part of the reason I was doing a podcast is because I wanted to have a female perception. Right? Uh, all this information comes through me and yeah, I know that sometimes, you know, podcast hosts um, that I have alongside myself aren't always going to be well-received uh, simply because it's not me. And you guys are used to hearing me and my thoughts and my channel, et cetera, my voice, whatever. Um, the idea, though, is to get some different opinions from different professionals in the field. So I'm hoping that we have, uh, for the next episode, we're going to have a psychiatrist and a psychotherapist, possibly in the same episode. I'm going to try. And that episode is going to be geared towards uh, the, the women in the audience because we're pretty evenly split 50-50. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is to boil it all down, all we need is some confidence, some self-love that's backed by action and honesty, right? The truth sets you free. It really does. And if you're pining after somebody who you like and care about and you don't tell them well not only are you hurting yourself because you're suffering silently but you are hurting them in a way because the the friendship i suppose is a lie and since we're talking about dating 90 percent of the time you just you don't just approach somebody uh, that's part of the problem in a way and yet it's not because oftentimes friends turn into the best lovers because there's a foundation of friendship there. I guess what I'm saying, everybody, is just if you know what you want, go get it. And that's not just with dating. That's not just with relationships. That's with you as well. If you want something and it harms nobody, go get it. Stop thinking about it because all thinking is doing is making you miserable. Right? Corey Wayne called it the paralysis of analysis and he's so right whether you like him or not he's right about that because all we do is think and think and think and that prevents us from doing and if you know what you need and let's be honest you do know exactly what you need go get it stop thinking about it just go get it if anxiety is holding you back Address the anxiety. Talk to the counselor. Do the journaling. Visit nature. Find mental peace. Learn to self-soothe. 
These things are available. We live in the age of information where you can have anything you want. You can have any bit of information that you want at the click of a button. And that's great. But that also overcomplicates things because now you have options. Too many options. Sort of like going to a restaurant where all the food's good and you feel overwhelmed because you're not sure what to order because it's all good. You'd be happy with any of it. And that's life these days. But what's important for you all is to have a goal, right? That's ultimately what kills people is that they don't have goals. There's too many options. There's too many ways it could go. And when there's no clear-cut path towards what you want, you are immediately overwhelmed by choice, by confusion, by ways to get there, right? Maybe I'll take a car. Maybe I'll take a cab. Maybe I'll take a train. Maybe I'll take a plane. Maybe I'll walk or bike ride. There's so many different methods of, of getting to where you need to be that you overwhelm yourself. So start with what you know. Start small. Your goal is to be 1% better than you were yesterday. That's it. That's a good goal. That's a manageable goal. That's doable. If you, if you exercised for 30 minutes yesterday, exercise for 31 today. And whatever manifestation that might be in, in other areas of your life. But you know what to do. So just do it. Because you can do it. Because you are blessed enough to have the ability to listen to videos like this and others. You are blessed enough to have life and to make that what you want to be. So I um, thoroughly enjoyed this, um, I guess, stream of consciousness episode of The Love Chat. And if you did too, let me know in the comments because maybe I'll do this, I don't know, once a month. We'll just sit and talk shop. Or maybe I'll even do this uh, as a live stream version. But, you know, the problem with the live streams is that people, because I set them up to be this, people uh, come to have their questions answered. So if I'm ignoring everybody's questions, I think uh, I think they'll throw a riot. But um, let me know if you guys enjoyed this, because I did. This was cool. This was different. And uh, that's all I had for today. So if you enjoyed this, let me know in the comments, and I'll talk to you all next time.